In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. What do I need to do to possess, to have, to hold the life of the age to come? The young man's question this morning's gospel was, of course, not a new question. It's the sort of question most people at some time or another ask. And of course, in first century, in Galilee, in Judea, this was the sort of thing that was debated rather widely. And there were various answers. Of course, they all turned around the keeping of the law, the Torah. But there were different ways of interpreting that, different ways of applying that. But in all cases, it meant complexifying the situation, making it more complicated, making it more elaborate, producing explanations and lists and checklists. And it seems to be that sort of thing that this young man, as sincere as he is, and we have no doubt, no reason to doubt his sincerity, but it seems to be that sort of thing that he's looking to the Lord Jesus to provide, some more detail some more elaboration, perhaps some tools and, and guidance and advice, some things that he might do in order to kind of perfect this following of the law. Our Lord, of course, just points directly at the law and lists actually the second six of the Ten Commandments, interestingly, leaving off the first four, but we'll come back to that. And they're all the ones about relationships. And of course, the man says, well, I've done all of this. He's been keeping the law almost the way Boy Scouts collect badges. He's been doing the things, collecting them, adding them up, putting them on his list. What then do I lack? And it's here that the Lord Jesus, rather than like the other rabbis, the other the Pharisees, or even the Essenes, or the other groups in, in the Jewish people, who would make it more complicated, add to the list, or elaborate, or detail, just simplifies it radically. He says, if you want to be complete, if you want to be whole, if you want to be perfect, then sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow it. Not 613, or whatever it is, variations on keeping the law, but simply give it all up and live a radical life, give it all up and follow me. The man, of course, famously goes away sad, unable to hear this word. I heard once that if you want to catch a monkey, you set out a jar. And you set out a jar that's just wide enough that with an open hand, the monkey can stick his hand into it. But you put something in that jar that he wants, like perhaps a piece of fruit, and he'll grab hold of it. And of course, having grabbed hold of the thing that he wants, he can no longer remove his hand from the jar, and he's stuck. That image comes to mind when I think of this young man. He's grasped hold of things, and he doesn't want to let go. And so he's caught. He doesn't have the freedom to follow Christ. He doesn't actually have the freedom to embark on this kingdom project. He doesn't have the freedom from his possessions in order to commit himself to that very life of the age to come that he seeks. He wants to possess that thing. Here's the great irony, of course. He's a collector. He's a collector of laws. He's a collector of things that he's done. He collects these things like other people might collect coins or butterflies or antiques or something. And in collecting these things, what the Lord says, if you want to complete your collection, let it all go. Ungrasp your hand. Unclasp your hand. Let go of those things that so entangle you. If you want to have everything, you must start by having nothing. You want to complete your collection, empty yourself. If you want to have the life of the age to come, then you must lose the life of this age and all of the things here that you grasp hold of. 
all of the things that you are clinging to here and now in this life, because in clinging to those things, you're unable to unclench your hand and you're stuck and you can't move forward. You can't actually inherit or possess or grasp the life of the age to come. You're like that silly monkey that is moments away from freedom, but just won't let go and is stuck. And that's how this young man is. And if we're honest with ourselves, that's how we often are, in fact, grasping hold of things in this life. Whether it's great possessions like this young man, or whether we think we've you know, somehow uh, abstracted ourselves from wealth, perhaps, in this life, or at least they don't, we're not clinging to it. But it could be any number of other things that we want to possess and keep hold of. Maybe it's hurts and bitterness, the wounds that other people have given. We just don't let go. And we don't love and forgive and, and give ourselves the freedom of moving forward into the kingdom. For others, it's just simply living, grasping hold of this biological life and not wanting to let go. And not living in another way, which is to say to lay down our life and live for the age to come. Well, all of us have something to unclench our hands around. And we, not, we need in our spiritual life, we need in our, in our life of repentance, of confession, we need to look deeply in our hearts at those things that we've possessed, that we've learned to grasp hold of and not unclench our hand around. And that ultimately is what the spiritual life, the life of repentance should be about, turning away from those things that we cling to, that keep us back. Because as our Lord indicates to this young man, in order to have the life of the age to come, we cannot desire this life. We cannot cling to the present age, the age that is passing away, the age that has been emptied of its power and meaning and purpose. In all respects, we must become already citizens of the age to come. So let us, as we will sing in a few moments' time, set aside all those things, those earthly cares that so entangle us, and let us instead join with the angels in surrounding the glory of the King, the King who reigns already in the age to come, which is inaugurated, and let us not be like those ones imprisoned by grasping things in this life, but rather reaching with emptiness and open hearts towards the life of the age to come. Amen. The Lord's blessing be upon you all this day. Um, if you'll indulge me for a moment, I mentioned in the sermon that um, the first four commandments of the Ten Commandments aren't listed by our Lord, and I said I would come back to it. I meant in the sermon that I was distracted, but maybe I was clever in getting you to think about it all this time. Um, that is, if you didn't just keep thinking about the monkey. Um, so why does our Lord not mention those first four commandments? Because precisely those commandments relate to unclenching our hands. Uh, Thou shalt have no gods before me. In other words, no idols, which is the second commandment, and you will not take the Lord's name in vain. In other words, don't use God for earthly purposes. And finally, keeping the Sabbath, which is about stopping, stopping our possession, possessing of things, our possessions, our grasping hold of things, and taking a break, putting a limit to all of that. And so by commanding the man to get rid of everything, he was in fact fulfilling the remainder of the, the Ten Commandments there. So just thought I would return to that point before you wondered later why I had forgotten, um, which I had. 